Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Slip Safety Show. My name is Christian Harris and as well as being the host of the show, I'm the founder of Slip Safety Services. My guest today is John Simpson. He's the co-founder of FreshCheck, which is a company that has a very exciting product which enables you to cheaply, quickly uh, and very easily identify how clean a surface actually is. A uh, very interesting conversation with John uh, talking about how cleaning it needs to and is moving to being more scientific. So rather than thinking about does it just look clean, um, is a surface actually clean and what are the benefits of doing that? Um, I think you'll find this very, very useful and I'd certainly recommend getting a sample of the product and giving it a try in your workspace or even at your uh, house because it's uh, it's certainly enlightening when you can see the effect that, uh, that more effective cleaning practices have in terms of the true cleanliness of surfaces. If you enjoyed this episode, give us a like, a comment and a subscribe, and we will look forward to seeing you on future episodes. But for now, let's get into it with John Simpson of Fresh Check. John Simpson, welcome to the Slip Safety Show. Hello, thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure. I was keen to get you on because I think what you guys are doing is really, really important as uh, people that have been following me and my social media will probably know because I've been talking about it a fair bit. Um, yeah. But for, for those that haven't heard of you or, or Fresh Check, do you want to just give a quick overview of your background and then at a kind of headline level what the company does? Yeah, sure. So uh, at Fresh Check, what we've done so far is come up with a color change spray technology. And so what it does is it goes from purple to any other color in the presence of a dangerous level of currently bacterial, chemical and organic contamination. So that's so a food residue or an area that's been uh, heavily used and soiled. Mm -hmm. And it's basically a good way of just proving whether or not a surface is clean and fit for purpose, uh, be it an office or a, a kitchen or front of house restaurant table. We just make sure that the cleaning process has been done to the highest level of safety. Yeah, that makes sense. And what, what, uh, what got you uh, interested in, in this world then? Lots of people in, in yeah. um, safety, for example, um, <laughs> don't grow up wanting to be in safety, but they kind of fall into it. But how did you... And no, how did we start? Yeah. It, it was, uh, uh, so actually originally uh, the way we started was we wanted to make a use by date label, something which was able to detect whether or not food had gone off in a more scientific way. So uh, my background is in science. I'm a chemist of too many years now. Um, but yeah, we, we wanted to find a way to be able to actually tell you whether or not food has spoiled versus the use by date system, mm -hmm. uh, which is a bit wishy-washy. Um, and we, we sort of found a very good chemical sort of way of doing this and being able to look at contamination. But then the, the sort of, as we were learning about it in the industry and food industry, et cetera, we found that margins are very tight. They're very hard to sort of maintain and to add in a sort of smart use by date label was uh, tricky in terms of costing. Mm. Whereas for uh, the, the sort of chem chemistry that we had, we found that there is a huge issue right now where current methodologies to look at contamination on surfaces. So that's uh, chopping boards through to uh, large conveyor belts, making hundreds of sandwiches a day. The way of being able to look at contamination there is quite expensive. What they use right now is ATP swab testing, uh, which is good. I can't deny that it's a good way of doing it, but mm. um, you know, per test, it can be anything from uh, 70p up to £1.50. And you need to buy a reader as well. And this yeah reader is expensive and cumbersome and you've got to carry it around um, and it, it limits the portability and also because ATP testing is uh, biological in nature it means that it's very hard to keep portable you can't move it around from site to site very easily and normally you give it to one person and say hey I want you to go to five facilities or restaurants today and do tests mm -hmm. for me and that limits the you know the applicability to surface hygiene testing to many many different areas yeah and so that's why we came up with Fresh Check. We sort of altered our product into be, uh, being a spray which can detect surface hygiene. And we wanted something that number one was uniquely affordable, something mm -hmm. that it can be far more applicable to several markets. Right now, as I said, ATP is used, it's used a lot in the food manufacturing side of things. Yeah. But, um, the issue is, is uh, many other markets can't use this kind of tool. You know, restaurants can't use it. There's too many sites. Gyms can't use it. Offices can't use it. It's just too expensive and um, pricey to actually uh, to use. on a regular Cumbersome basis. as well. 
Hmm. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So we wanted to make sure that what we had uh, at maximum is 40 pence a test. So obviously, as you buy more, it gets cheaper. That's a, you know, units of yep. economy, etc. Uh, it's most importantly, I think it's portable. It, mm -hmm. it because uh, it's chemical based, it means it has a two year shelf life and you can just store it in your bag and move it from site to site very easily. Yeah. And then finally as well, one important part is the simplicity of it. It no longer needs a reader. You don't need to carry it around and have it in the fridge. Well, you do need to carry it around. Sorry, that's, you know, I still have to do that bit. I <laughs> still have to do that bit, yeah. Yeah, can't, exactly. You can't, you, can't, you can't do it through, through um, osmosis or through the No, market. not quite yet. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> when, uh, when the laws of physics change, we'll see yeah. what we can do then. But are we, uh, it's, it's simple. It's a really, it's a binary color change. It's, if it's purple, it's clean. If it changes color, you need to re-clean that surface. It's a really simple test that uh, anyone can use, basically. And it yeah. can give peace of mind to everyone in gyms, in hotels, in restaurants, in mm -hmm food catering it's a really widely applicable tool uh which can be a benefit to everyone now especially yeah. in the current environment in the current right? environment yeah yeah it's very similar actually to the world of uh, of slip safety which is kind of where i started off and yeah. there's a there's a, a way of doing it which is called a pendulum test uh, which mm -hmm. is what the hsc use and it's used in court but it's very bulky you know it's a massive bit of kit it weighs about 25 kilos um yeah. it's it, it is portable but obviously it's not that portable. It's not no, very yeah, practical. Quite, quite portable. Um, yeah. It's, 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 you know, several thousand pounds to buy one. Mm -hmm. And that's a bit of a blocker because, you know, it, it just means that fewer places get slip testing done than, than they yeah. probably should. So I think, you know, um, what you've done here is, is, uh, is fantastic to kind of open this Thank up you. to a, to a bigger marketplace. Um, so from, from a scientific perspective, then what are the key principles of doing effective cleaning? Oh, that's a very good one. Uh, well, effective cleaning, uh, normally in the past, it's always been pivotal that you do it, uh, but it's normally expected that you, you know, you have a, an order to come along and just make sure that your processes that you have are written down correctly and you are saying that I'm doing this. So that's mm -hmm. the, the, the current way of really proving due diligence is to go, I had an order to come through, they agreed with my cleaning process and I am doing that effectively. And for many different areas and markets, the reason why they don't do the current testing is because it is just an overhead right now. Mm. You know, it is, it, it, that's what it ends up being. So they just sort of go, haven't had any issues, you know, or I haven't had anyone come back and say I've got contaminated or, uh, you know, normally it's been looked at bacteria, but obviously viruses are coming up a lot more for, yeah. for reasons. And uh, so before recently, the most the sort of primary markets looking at surface hygiene and testing were primarily in the sort of food service and food manufacture. But this is becoming far more prevalent in any area because of the way COVID has made people think about, you know, am I safe? You know, yeah. can I go to, you know, the, the, the pubs and restaurants opened up this weekend and, um, you know, there was surveys going out showing that 30% of people were scared to go out and eat. Uh, right now, 40% of people are scared to go back to the office just because they're worried about where contamination might lie. They don't want to get on the tubes. They don't want to get on. Uh, they don't want to sit in their offices just in yeah. case it could pick up the virus. So being able to prove any kind of cleaning and due diligence to cleaning and safety it has been more important than ever right now. It's a really important thing that uh, companies and companies have to do not only for their staff, but for customers too. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, it, you guys, as I understand it, historically have done a lot of work in kind of food production mm -hmm. uh, and, and areas like that. I mean, what proportion of surfaces um, historically have you found that have been uh, cleaned well using your, your test uh, versus not so well? In other words, you know, how, how yeah, well has that, has that sector been doing at cleaning? Yeah, no, normally it's actually, um, so in the food industry, what you have is your HACCP points. So that's hazard assessment of critical control points. So uh, you write down or you have work with an auditor to write down the areas that you care the most about and you're trying to keep the cleanest. And so, you know, when we go along to these uh, um, sort of food manufacturing facilities, we, we normally go around and show fresh check against ATP testing. Mm -hmm. So we'll go around with ATP and we'll go around with fresh check and go, look, ATP gave a reading of, uh, you know, 400, for example. Normally ATP readers work from zero to a thousand for yeah. uh, people who are, uh, I don't know about them. And so, you know, 400 is quite a large number. And, and, and zero being, being perfectly clean and a thousand yes, being, yes. being yeah. Exactly. And it depends on where you are. So in food manufacture, say if you're in an abattoir, obviously a bit dirtier compared to being in a restaurant. So for a restaurant, you want nothing above a hundred. 
normally. Whereas in an abattoir, you could expect it to go to 400 and still be like, okay, it's bad, but we're fine. Clean you know, enough. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Clean enough. And um, so, you know, but we go along and we do a fresh check, get a, get a color change and then do an ATP reading and, and see that the ATP corroborates well with this. And luckily, when we go to sort of uh, the food sites, you'd normally expect the conveyor belts to be the most cleanest point. You know, lots of conveyor belts are used for making sandwiches or packing whatever you're uh, running at that time. And uh, surprisingly, they're always ridiculously clean. We're always very happy to go there and spray it down and go, oh, the bit which touches the most food is always yeah. clean. But um, you, you end up finding um, random random points where uh, you, it doesn't matter too much that they're a bit unclean, but it's still surprising where it's, you know, the end of a conveyor belt or often where people have their wrists down on near the conveyor belt. So, you know, yeah. they're making a sandwich or packing or finally doing the final touches. And you, you find it's that sort of point there where there's a lot of um, human contact. There's hmm. a chance of cross-contamination, which is obviously a big bit. Um, but it does vary. It does vary. You know, in, in restaurants, um, you can find just a random tray which hasn't been cleaned very well. And then yeah. five of them are totally fine. And then one you go, oh, that was surprisingly unclean. Let's go and clean that one again. So. And the risk, obviously, is that you can't see this contamination. No. And, and therefore, you can't rely on the does it does it kind of look clean test yeah yeah does it look clean is not good enough especially in today's environment it's you know it's it's currently used a lot but um lots of companies are calling out for things that they can afford to allow them to do more due diligence you know if you can prove to you know say you're trying to get a, a marks and spencer's deal or contract in or you know a, la a larger contract in mm. um and they sort of you know, they'll have their own auditors come through and it's up to you to prove that you are the best client for them to use. And so, you you know, if you can go along and show, right, we do do, you know, micro testing and ATP testing, but we're also using FreshCheck too as a, as a more frequent tool. So we're doing constant testing all the time. And, you know, that's how, that's what differentiates you from the other market players. And mm -hmm. so being able to show any kind of extra level of due diligence for these larger companies is always a, a good thing. And they, yeah. they do pretty much like that. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. I've been talking with um, the, the, the sort of leisure facility sector mm -hmm. about fresh check and, and I've been kind of explaining that obviously it's, it would be useful for them to use it to uh, ensure that they're kind of clean and safe yeah. for when they reopen. But also I, I gave, I gave a scenario of, you know, let's say a member is questioning how clean a piece of equipment is. Well, you yeah. could potentially, spray let's say the floor surface which obviously doesn't need to be as clean uh, hygienically as, as, as the equipment does where people are yeah. touching it uh, and show okay well that's changed color uh, but now let's spray this bit of equipment and here you can see that's clean and I think that would be a good that would be a good metric. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Like, uh, it's been amazing because we, we always wanted to push into these markets, you know, hospitality, gyms, all that kind of stuff. And it's always been on our pipeline, you know, um, but it was only since the, you know, the issue of cleaning and proving clean cleanliness has come so much more into the public eye. So yeah. you've been fantastically helpful for pushing us towards gyms and sort of yeah. being able to do this. But yeah, no, thank you. It's been very helpful because uh, as you say, it's a really great tool to be able to go, look, yes, the floor might be unclean, but it is a floor in a gym, but don't worry, the equipment is uh, safe to use. So don't yeah. worry about that. Mm. Yeah. I think particularly given the, the government stance has been that, you know, gyms, I think the two things they've said are that there are so many touch points. And as you said earlier, mm -hmm any human contact is a source of cross-contamination, a source of, yeah. of risk, and, and couple that with the harder breathing that you get in the gym, and therefore the droplets are spreading yeah. more, more widely and in greater volume. And I think that's why the government has said, you know, they've been a bit more cautious about, about gyms specifically reopening. So I think anything that, that these facilities can do, as you say, to prove that their cleaning and sanitizing and disinfection practices are effective is going to be invaluable. Yeah, definitely, definitely. We couldn't agree more. Um, it's it's uh, yeah, singing from the same uh, hymn sheet entirely. It's uh, it's going to be so much more important than ever before. I mean, as you know, as as a scientist background, it's always been important to have some kind of gold standard. You know, in the in the science world, there is the perfect kilo in the you know in the National Physical Laboratory, and it's you know I, until recently there hasn't been a well. We we would hope in a sort of five years time. It'd be amazing to be able to go, look, everyone can operate at the same with the same tool and be able to show that they're being as clean as possible. And it, it sort of it levels the playing field for a lot of the small players, because, you know, um, say you're a small factory or a small restaurant, you might lose out on some business because, you you know, when you come and show your hygiene data, you, you can only afford to do 
you know a, a smaller amount than the larger players and so this sort of levels it out a bit more for you know small gyms uh, small restaurants hotels to so sort of have the same level of tools or sensitivity uh, that the large ones do and mm. yeah i think it'd be very exciting to have that yeah yeah, yeah absolutely and i think it, i i can see uh, you know a need for that from a customer perspective because you know whatever sector you're in even if you're a you know um, an office building i think yeah. people are going to be nervous as you've said about returning uh, and, and feeling as if everything possible is being done um, exactly. to, to make things safe. And unfortunately, in the UK, in the past, you know, the standard of cleanliness in most buildings, in, in my opinion anyway, um, exactly. hasn't been that great. Um, I don't know what your view is on that. Yeah, no, it's always been that same thing where they go, oh, we do have a cleaner come along. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure everyone's been in an office environment where you go, well, why is the fridge in absolute disarray? And how come there's still... You know, you, you can just tell when some offices have been cleaned and other ones haven't been cleaned. Um, and it has always been an, an important part. And I think uh, contract cleaners need to be able to show that they are doing everything. And, you know, again, they just don't have that tool. So hopefully we can give it to them so they can actually show and go, don't tell us we're not doing our job. Here, Here is our data sheet. We've been doing this. We've got photos of it. We've got photos showing that every surface in this building has a purple fresh check. Color. Yeah, it didn't change. So. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's an, an, a good a good uh, market for you guys would be the contract cleaners, and and I think uh, they sometimes get maligned a bit unfairly because you know fundamentally, if a building owner or, or managing agent or whatever is only willing to spend ten pounds to de- to get the cleaning done, yeah, whereas yeah. actually to do it properly would cost fifteen pounds, then of course uh, the contract cleaner. You know, can't deliver a can't deliver a gold standard for a bronze can. for a bronze price. I agree. Yeah, it's very hard because you know, as uh, it, you were in agreement that having a two stage clean, you know, disinfection, sanitization is uh, the best way of doing it. And you can already tell that a lot of marketplaces, uh, well, sorry, offices and um, small restaurants, etc. It's all about that one size fits all spray right now. And uh, Whilst that's fine, you know, I can understand it's a bottom line kind of issue. Um, It depends on what's more important. You know, if I think having both and being able to do a disinfection and sanitization has always been the better way of making sure your facilities are as clean as possible. Um, So hopefully there might be a bit more of a change back to that kind of model because it's always been a, a far more safer way of doing cleaning compared to just going, here's a load of this one chemical that I've now wiped around a surface um fingers crossed i'm clean yeah Yeah, that's it it's getting away from fingers crossed i'm clean to here's some proof that i'm clean and and that's that's the way we need to be to be going i mean what what uh what issues have you seen then historically with cleaning you know has it been the 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 chemical products that's been used hasn't been right or the method or the frequency or the process Yeah, it's often, in terms of frequency, it's always hard to say because, uh, you know, we're, we only go in to do a trial for, you know, an hour and then yeah. you're gone and we, we rely on them to sort of follow the, the, the guidance, et cetera, which I think people do. Well, you'd hope they do anyway. Uh, then um, we think what, what I've seen most of all, because we did a, a, a large sort of international trial recently with a, a sort of larger fast food chain. Mm-hmm. And um, when we were there, the one thing that we did notice was the uh the way that chemicals were being used was incorrect Mm. so you know it was a bottle of sort of sanitizer um you know you can read on the side of the bottle leave for 10 leave for five minutes to sit then you wipe it away with and then you rinse with potable water and uh you know i I used to work in pubs and restaurants etc and i i I am also guilty of this i treat it like a bottle of household dental you spray it you wipe it you carry on with your day and you're using the same cloth everywhere um, that bottle of Dettol has gone from the kitchen into the front of house to near the bathroom and, you know, bad stuff that you shouldn't have done basically. Mm-hmm. But I was young and naive and never <laughs> trained properly. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think the main thing is seeing people misuse chemicals. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's always been an interesting one to me where, um, you know, I've always been a proponent of, there's lots of leave-on sanitizers right now. Um, this is a bit more of a rant, I'm afraid, sorry. But there's lots of leave-ons out there where, you know, they, they, they say leave-on, but in reality, it's still, no, you, you grab a cloth, normally a wet cloth, and you do wipe it down because if you just spray it, have a quick wipe, and then you're leaving just a puddle of chemicals there, sure, you've killed all the nasty bacteria and food residues and stuff. You've denatured it, at the very least, so it's no longer viable. But you've just left a sort of 
biological soup on the a, table. A sort of a, a petri and a petri dish to yeah, attract ex more, exactly. more contamination. Yeah, exactly. And then it just allows uh, bacteria, which is always going to get there. You can't escape bacteria. That's the, the whole point of it. But it's it just leaves it with a food source. And so mm. instead of actually having a sanitized area, you've just got this pool of yeah as you said petri dish you just made a petri dish and then you're having your uh you know your staff or your customers just sit there and you know hope that they're okay well they don't even know so yeah it's, tricky. it's a real challenge and that, again that's another reason why uh, we have fresh check so you can <laughs> test it and just show okay my cleaning has been up to standard um yeah. whilst we whilst we do look at bacteria high levels of chemicals which shouldn't be present you know impermissible levels of chemicals and these sort of biological debris that all together, it's, you know, these are sort of used as indicator organisms. We do detect those, but at the end of the day, it's indicator organisms to show that the cleaning is up to standard, yeah. not to show that you're, well, it does show that you're bacteria free, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing we do is to prove that it is as clean as possible. So. Yeah. And from a, from, a, from a COVID perspective, um, obviously, if you can prove that the surface is as clean as possible and free of organic matter and bacteria and so on yeah. and so forth, then then actually it follows that there is very, very unlikely to be any virus. On the yeah, virus there. Yeah, exactly. It's the, yeah, the indicator, the indicator organisms is a really good analogy for that. Yeah. If you could prove, if you could prove that everything's gone, basically, whilst we don't directly look at uh, viruses, if you have done the suitable level of cleaning, which we show, then yeah, chances are you've got rid of everything on that surface. So. Yeah. Yeah, one of my bugbears is is going to a Starbucks or a Costa or mm. Pret or I'm going to name them all because they're none of them are <laughs> singularly uh, guilty of this. But you know, you kind of sit down at the table and you see the barista come over and spray something on the table and yeah. wipe it off, and it's like they think they're doing the right thing. Yeah, because they're, they're, been... they're kind of I don't know if they're wasting their time. I wouldn't say they're wasting their time, but they're not mm. doing what they think they're doing. No, yeah, exactly. It's 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 still something, but it is a very it's the the smallest amount of something you could possibly be doing for that mm -hmm. point. I understand that when you've got a high turnaround area, it is tricky to go and do these kind of cleanings, but you should be doing it as best as you can. You know, you should be watching and monitoring and going, okay, that table's quickly clean. I'm going to go and do a spray and try and try and keep it there for at least at least a minute i think is most of them uh well lots of sanitizers anyway but yeah it is tricky i understand the plight of the front of house um but that makes a sort of a tool like what we have here even more important so you can quickly even show to a customer and go hey i know you might be concerned but it is clean it stayed purple so by all means please sit here and feel safe so. yeah yeah I've come up with a bit of an acronym around cleaning methodologies, which might be useful, oh, yeah. uh, which is um, uh, ROTAS. So uh, R is reg regularity. So, you know, how, how frequently are we cleaning? And yeah. obviously the, the, the virus pandemic has shed light on, on that. Oh, how, how regular? Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> um, o, o is organisation. So that's all about ma knowing what outcomes you're after. So again, mm -hmm. playing into that and managing it and ensuring it's being uh, delivered properly. T is time, so how much time are we physically allowing for any given task? Yep. A is ability, so that's all about the staff. So are they trained and yeah. motivated, and do they understand what they need to do and why? Um, and uh, and S is system, so the kit. So are we giving them the right chemical, the right yep. mop, or the right brush, or the right whatever it is, and kind of put all those mm. things together, and that's a good way of of, of having yeah. a, an effective cleaning system. No, I like that. Yeah. Rotors is a very good way of saying it. It is, it is those things where, which, are, yeah, as you said, with COVID, it, that, that R is going to become far more, far more uh, frequent now, which is uh, very important. You know, we, we see all the time where it's, uh, you know, you, we hear, you hear of auditors going to companies and um, they go through their sort of like due diligence forms, et cetera, and go, wait, do you clean, you clean your bathroom every two hours? Like, that's not good enough. You have to go in there and do it a bit more often. So hmm. yeah, it's, a, it's really interesting. It's, a, it's, it's an interesting market. Yeah, room. yeah, it is. One of, one of the uh, issues that I see uh, in the current climate is that everybody's very paranoid about sanitization. Yeah. And so what, I, what I'm kind of getting the sense of is that there's a lot of spraying or fogging or misting or whatever of sanitizers mm. going on again and again and again and again um but perhaps not as much cleaning what mm. what would be the from a kind of you know science perspective of how effective cleaning works what would be the the risks of kind of loading up sanitizer after sanitizer after sanitizer without yeah. doing any any kind of effective cleaning between 
Yeah, it's a uh, well because you know it's sort of disinfection is the important you know it uses more harsher chemicals, but that's what's really culling off a lot of whatever's there. That's the sort of stronger chemicals, and it's used to get rid of uh, anything that is living there. Whereas sanitization still does that; it's still important and anti uh, you know antibacterial etc. But also lots of them nowadays try and prime that surface to be more antibacterial in nature, so it's less likely that things will grow there. So sanitizers are important and they still do a good job, but if you're continuously just doing that, it's not, it, it's potentially not effective enough in killing whatever is there too. Um, and it's, it just doesn't quite do enough of a, enough of a clean to make sure that you are working to the levels of safety that you, you are promising in terms of, you know, promising the FSA and promising uh, your customers that you're keeping them at. So, and, and also sanitization, actually it's the same with disinfection, but lots of sanitizers need to be left for a very long time uh, to be truly effective. Um, so when you're doing front of house stuff, um, as, as you said earlier, if you're going to a Pret, Starbucks, Costa, you know, other, other coffee shops are available. Uh, it, the, the tricky part is, is, um, you know, how effective is that being? It's, it's not going to be effective enough over time after time. Things will slip through the net, you know, the sort of sanitizer net. Um, so you really do need to train staff and being a bit more forceful and going, hey, I need to clean this table off. And that, that is tricky. I understand right. it's, it's a double-edged sword because obviously the Mr. Manager is going to be saying to you, uh, no, get, get more people in, get more yeah. money in, blah, blah, blah. Um, and uh, it's tricky. Yeah, it's tricky because right. like, luckily we don't see huge amounts of these issues coming through. You know, we, we do try and keep everything as safe as possible. Yeah. But the reason why we don't is because we are promising or trying to do the best we can. And so uh, it's important that people keep doing that, I think. Mm. Yeah. Mm. What about, because um, one of the things that, that, that Fresh Check uh, tests for is obviously chemical residues. I mean, if, if you were just, you know, spraying over a sanitizer again and again and again and again on the surface, you'd, you'd I guess, would have a buildup of residue over time and then yeah. that would need to be removed. Exactly, exactly. And that's, a, well, that's one of the uh, uh, colour changes we have. So it's quite a rapid one there as well. So it, it really does very quickly sort of go, hey, just so you know, the amount of chemicals you have on the surface is uh, impermissible. You know, you don't want to be, as much as it's important that you get rid of uh, bacteria, that is obviously critical or any kind of like organics, uh, biological stuff. Having a large amount of chemicals present too is still can be just as harmful. You know, um, I'm sure everyone's had that sort of funny tasting soda, um, you know, from a dishwasher which has gone wrong. Or, um, you know, it's, it doesn't happen too often. But you know, you can if you get, you know, you're eating a burger and you've got chemicals all over your hands. You can wonder why you have an upset stomach and you'd instantaneously blame the food. But, mm. um, you know, when you're ingesting even a small amount of these chemicals, it can be quite harmful and uh, you know, not be comfortable in your stomach. So yeah. Yes, no, absolutely. Mm. So, um, what's the the plan then for the next couple of years for you guys? You know, have you got any exciting developments going on, or different projects, or is it just kind yeah. of all about trying to grow into some different marketplaces and, and really get, as you say, that that sort of gold standard of of testing in place yeah, as widely as you can. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a, we want that gold standard, but we understand that's going to take time. You have to grow into the markets in order to, to become that kind of thing. And it's a, it's a wonderful science dream of mine, that one. I really would like that to occur. Um, but no, at the moment we are, um, you know, we have our fresh check spray, which is, you know, highly sensitive, does the trick very well. It's going to tell you whether or not that surface is clean too. Um, we've got a Campton BRI report, which is freely available uh, on our website. And uh, that already shows that we work down to a very low level of bacterial contamination to really prove that the surface is clean. But we understand for offices, et cetera, uh, having chemicals around isn't as dangerous and detrimental you know if you've sort of got a bit of mr yeah. sheen on a keyboard that's okay you know you're not going to be harming anyone so we're working on making one which only responds to biological contamination mm -hmm. so really looking at uh, bacteria food residue and then still using that indicator organism theory where you know if you've got rid of all these biologicals then viruses and all that other stuff has gone too yeah. uh finally we're, we're looking at two new products as well because we you know our, our sort of unique USP that we have here is a chemical which can be put into many different uh, products. So we're looking at making a, a swab which is able to change color. So if you think of an ATP swab, it's basically that but with a color change system in it. Yeah. 
um, and then finally a hand wipe as well. So something that people can, you know, we, we would love to bring that out to a sort of more customer market as well going forward. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can, uh, we always get asked by people, oh, I'd love to have um, a sort of, you know, a fresh check hand wipe, so a purple hand wipe, which changes color uh, if there's contamination there. And they always say they want it for going on easy jet flights or going yeah. on you know, a budget airline. Which you really um, because you'd, you'd start, you'd, you'd get paranoid about it and start using yeah, it everywhere. Exactly. And, you'd, and you'd probably find that lots of places weren't very clean. No, exactly. Let's go have the, I think there's a known unknown scenario and I'd rather keep it that way for me. But yeah, we've got, we've got plenty of other ideas going forward as well. So, um, you know, trying to make, uh, you know, with the, the technology and chemistry is well known and we're looking forward to making, you know, a specific one for an office, which works to the sort of government guidelines or whatever regulations that a company wants to work to. Mm. We can tune our chemistries as best as possible to meet, to meet everyone's demand and, and want. Yeah. So that'd be exciting. Fantastic, fantastic. Great. Well, thanks very much for your time. Um, how, if people are interested in this, which I'm sure they will be, uh, how should they best uh, follow what you guys are doing or get in touch with you guys, um, you know, if they yeah. wanted to to get some of the product, for example, to, to try out? Well, we've got our, our website right now is uh, www.freshcheckuk.com. So freshcheckuk.com. And uh, we... You, uh, when you're there, you can. Uh, we've got an online sales portal, so you can buy a hundred mil bottle or a fifteen mil bottle of our uh, our current spray version. Um, there's links to some of our blogs, as and when we can do that, and our Facebook page. We do technically have Instagram, but I, I use it to be a placeholder towards Facebook and LinkedIn. Yeah. Uh, and you can find us again at uh, Fresh Check UK and all those sites as well. Perfect. Well, John, that's that's great. Really insightful. Really, really useful stuff. So thank you very much, and thank I look you. forward to. Uh, doing some more stuff with you guys in the weeks and months and years to come. Definitely. Same here. Same here. It's going to be exciting times moving yeah. into these new markets. Definitely. So. Cheers. Brilliant. Cheers. Cheers.